let's get into workloads. Why is this model especially well suited for, of course, these days, the hottest topic is AI ML, GPU heavy workloads and workloads that involve sensitive data. Yeah, I think effectively um, Kubernetes itself is making a big push towards supporting AI and specialized workloads better than it did before. I think initially in the scope of Kubernetes, it was very, very heavily centered around long running, you know, web server type uh, applications. And with the recent advancements in Kubernetes, like DRA, for example, right, dynamic resource allocation, big push has been made towards how can we you know, request certain specific hardware, right? Because when you're saying I need, you know, three GPUs to run this, well, it really matters if this is a commodity GPU or if this is a newest like Blackwell series from NVIDIA type GPU, right? Um, and I think Kubernetes itself has been making huge advancements to support these kind of distinctions uh, much, much better than in the past. So. Any innovation that comes out of Kubernetes core is obviously immediately available uh, to vCluster users. And um, on top of that, with things like auto nodes that we're um, you know, just launching and, and starting to tell the world about, we're obviously helping companies to right size their GPU tenant clusters. Because one of the biggest challenges is, you know, let's say, as you mentioned, for for privacy reasons and for the sensitivity of certain like PII data and, and, and other very, very sensitive business critical data, you want to keep, you know, your AI inference workloads uh, running in your private data centers. Maybe you even build a custom data center because, you know, electricity needs and all kinds of things are different for, for GPU workloads. So maybe you have this large contract with Oracle to build a you know, new AI data center for you. I think there's been a bunch of news uh, recently around uh, these large data centers being commissioned, obviously for the biggest companies in the world, but I assume there's also going to be, you know, pushes from smaller enterprises and traditional, you know, like banks and insurance companies that want to um, also participate in this, uh, you know, race towards AI efficiency. And, if they are running GPUs on their own, the question really is, okay, you have a thousand GPUs now. How do you split it up across, you know, your 10 business units or your five ML teams, right? Um, how do you do that? So one of the, uh, you know, great things about vCluster auto nodes is you don't have to statically assign, you know, this GPU belongs to this tenant, this GPU belongs to this tenant. Instead, you have a pool of GPUs and GPUs like DGX servers, for example, and then auto nodes with the Carpenter integration automatically assigns on demand these GPUs to the right tenants. And maybe that allocation is going to change tomorrow because one of the teams runs a large, you know, uh, you know, fine tuning workload this week, but next week they're pretty much done with this and you know they can return some of these gpus back to the pool for others to use in the organization so i think fair use across teams and across departments is a major concern for a lot of enterprises when they embark on the private cloud gpu journey 